Welcome to Shop Talk Live, brought to you by Tools Garage. I'm your host, Dave the Car Guy. Join us today as we dive into the world of car care and industry trends. Whether you're an enthusiast or just have a daily driver, we got you covered. Let's kick off today's episode. What's up, everybody? Dave the Car Guy. You know what time it is? That's right. Shop Talk time. Today on the show with me is Knight Kirolo from Stockton's very own Kirolo's Heating Air and Solar Company. Welcome to the show, Knight. How you doing? Thanks for having me. You, thanks for being here. So uh, this is going to be a funny story. Um, dressed like tradesmen. Yep. 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 Just as a uh, as a backstory, I I have a I have a lineup of people that are that are on the show, and uh, we had a last minute no show. I got the best Johnny on the spot, heating air and solar company came out here because we got some demo work up here in the uh, in the soon to be someday training center and studio, and uh, I happened to be up here and said, "Hey, guess what? Uh, we're doing something up here today, and you're my guest." <laughs> That's how good these guys are. So, night. What do you guys do? What do you guys do out here for Stockton? Uh, typically, we do uh, heating and air conditioning. So it's mostly, that's our bread and butter is uh, residential heating and air conditioning. Mm-hmm. Um, we just got into solar a few years back um, because it's fairly, it was fairly simple, the route that we take. Um, actually, me, myself, and Brandon um, in here, we actually just got certified in the last year to do the only service work around here and warranty work on uh, home standby generators for Generac. So we do quite a, my dad keeps us quite busy and like keeping us on the forefront and doing quite a bit under our belt. So, but typically it's our bread and butter is heating and air conditioning. Very cool. Very cool. Now, now when, uh, for, for the, the billions of, uh, fans out there, what, uh, what does heating and air conditioning mean? We use that in our, in our vernacular as well, HVAC, um, cause we have them in cars as well, but what, what does heating and air conditioning really mean? Well, um, in the simplest of terms and the way it makes sense to most people, it's what, uh, keeps your house cool in the summer and it's what makes your house warm in the winter. Um, mm-hmm. that's the simplest way I can do it. And I can tell you that most people don't know much about it past that, yeah. um, how it works and what it, what your, uh, cooling system or your, your condenser actually does to cool the air in yep. the house. But typically that's what it is. It's what makes it so it's not hot in your house yep. in the summertime and it makes it not cold in the wintertime. Yep. The, uh, this is some of the analogies that we use in, uh, or the way that we try to teach people when we're inevitably every summer, when people come in sweating and they're like, Oh, my air conditioning is not working. Well, the air conditioner, the way it works is, um, it doesn't blow out cold air. You know, your air conditioner actually absorbs hot air. So when it's really hot in the car and you're wondering why that air conditioning is not like you turn it on and you're not immediately feeling it it's uh it's got to absorb all that heat so at 130 or 140 whatever it is inside that car it's trying to absorb that to half or you know whatever it's going to be capable of doing and yeah and typically in a home system you're looking at a 20 degree split so if your house is 80 degrees you know at best you're going to probably be getting 60 degree air coming out Mm -hmm. and uh and most people don't understand is that the uh, the AC side actually yes it cools the air as a byproduct but really what it's doing is removing the humidity from the air and mm-hmm. that's what makes it feel uncomfortable yes. to people so yes you know seventy at 40 percent humidity is probably a little chilly seventy at sixty percent humidity is miserable so yes. you know, yes. and that's yeah. wetness the wetness so in your car. You notice ever a puddle of uh, water underneath your vehicle when you're running your air conditioner, that's the condensation, that's the condensation, that's the humidity getting pulled out. So, so, um, what do you find, what do you find is the, the busiest time of your, of your season? Because you you get the, you kind of get the best of both worlds. (laughs) Um, I'd say when the weather is mild, it's probably our slowest time, mm-hmm. slower. Um, my dad has done a very good job of making sure that we stay busy year round with the plethora of other things we've learned how to do. But busiest time, my craziest time is summertime. Yeah. Uh, we're lurking, we're working long days, long weeks. Um, 
100 degree plus weather um it's always funny uh is a lot of customers during the summertime go do you understand how hot it is when i walk into her house and i'm like yes yes i do i understand <laughs> completely yeah i know but right. it's and it's what's crazy is, is i i my dad's phone just talking about is my dad's phone goes off all the time i try not to give my cell phone number out because i've had customers call me at like midnight saying their ac don't work so yeah, yeah summertime's the craziest yeah i can imagine I've probably been one of those calls, you know, <laughs> uh, but uh, as a fellow tradesman, I, I get it. You know, I know, I know when, when something breaks down and you gotta, you gotta manage, you gotta make the phone call, get it on schedule because you know, there's not enough of us out there. Right. No. Um, and I can relate to, you know, your dad getting out there, making it busy. You know, we're a, uh, we're a family business as well. So how, uh, how do you like working in the family business? Um, I've been doing this. Long, I've been in the family business for a long time. Um, but working, it has its. I always tell everybody. I tell everybody the same thing. I tell. I'm gonna tell you. It has its ups and downs. You know, it's uh, it's like your your dad coaching you at t ball, except for yeah. now you're working with them and yeah. money's involved. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, I love it because it's not like I'm just another person at a company. I have a say, you know, everybody who works with us is like family. They wear this, our last name on the shirt. So they're like family. Yep. And uh, we all have a say, we all have input, you know, so it's, it like it, it balances out for the most part. Actually, it's probably got more positives than does, you know, any cons, but I like it. I do. Honestly, I think about it a lot um, because I actually went to uh, college and the fact thinking about if I was just another you know, working in a lab like I wanted to versus now I probably couldn't see myself doing it because I have so much more freedoms, you know, to do. And like, I have the ability to solve problems at my, uh, leisure, I guess, yeah. to say, lack of a better term. Yep. So. Yeah. So I, uh, we always joke about, uh, being fam- family business because my, my wife, I work with my wife, I work with my son and, you know, we're a close family. So it's like, where's that separation? There is none. <laughs> There's that. We try. No, it, <laughs> we, it is. We, that, that part is rough. Yeah. Um, I, and to be honest, uh, my aunt is actually the one who answers the phone. So it's uh, actual families, my dad, my aunt, and uh, myself. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to know about closeness, we all live within a block of each other. Yep. Well, we, well, because my grandmother, she that's what she's lived in the same house she's lived in for 50 years. So we all live near her. She lives by herself. She's a stubborn old Italian woman. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you, you know, that that's that tracks. So my wife's Italian. She grew up in Belmont. Her grandmother lived at the corner. She lived across the street. Her parents lived three doors down. They own a couple rentals on that <laughs> block. Her aunt lives two doors down from that and her cousin with her. So... It's kind of an Italian thing, you know, it's like, it's like being in Italy. Everybody's going to throw out the pasta out the window, the prosciutto, you know, hey, hey, I'm on ya. So it's, uh, it is a, it's kind of fun though. I mean, I, I, when we lived in Belmont, I lived right next door to her parents. So for most, you know, husbands, uh, you know, the in-laws, you don't really want to like, what, <laughs> what's happening? But um, I love it. You know, I, I, I grew up in, in more of like a Latin, you know, Hispanic household, like, you know, a bunch of aunts and uncles and, you know, my grandma and all that stuff. And it was really close knit. So um, I kind of miss that because now that it's, it's all there's less of them and, you know, we're split out. But the Italian closeness kind of brings it brings it back in there, you know, so I'm Italian by marriage. And it's, I love it. I love it. Oh, yeah, no. So um, we we met you guys when we when we uh, took over Bruce and Jack's. Um, we had one of your trucks, I think, in the shop at the time, and uh, we've gotten to, you know, we we work together back and forth. You know, you're you're our go to, which in this old building is often enough. <laughs> yeah, because most people would see some old stuff like this, and uh, I can still work on it, but. 
usually I tell people if you want it to work, I can get it to work, but is it really worth the time and money right. it is to get it to work? Because I have a boiler that's older than that in one person's house and a boiler down at the cemetery that we still keep running. And I think the date code on that is like mid 40s. Yeah. And yeah, when that thing goes out, everybody looks at us and I'm like, I'm going to need some time, but I'll get it working. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a nice relationship. Yep. So we, uh, we, we've used you for even other location matters. So you guys are, you guys are solid. Uh, it's nice. It's when people are talking about mechanics, they're like, oh man, you gotta have a good mechanic. You gotta have a good doctor and a good whatever. To me as a, you know, I guess as a building owner for my businesses, I have to have a good electrician. I have to have a good HVAC person because man, shit happens. You know, <laughs> it does. And we were, like we were talking about old buildings like this over the years, they keep getting added to and then yep. problems arise. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So, um, he is, uh, what Knight's doing is actually, you know, gutting out this upstairs room we have so I can have a cool studio and we're going to build out some, a training facility up here because we have a lot of, man, we have a lot of people in the company now with the three locations and, um, so we want to we want to have a place to bring trainers in, internally train and maybe even set up some sort of a technical training center where we can put up some bugged circuit boards that we can alter and have diagnostic tests run and maybe even some mechanical stuff for our our junior uh, mechanical technicians, but that's my that's my goal, my vision for this upstairs. Um so it's it's awesome. They're in here taking out what he's calling a boiler. Is it's kind of like it's kind of like your heater unit, but it's fifty times the size. And yeah, and it runs off water. <laughs> it you runs know? off water. Yeah. yeah, it's it's and they're a pain. They're finicky to keep going, but yeah, they're just they're old. These old school <clears throat> units are just huge. Yeah. What's your uh, what's your favorite thing to do night when you're when you're when you're working? What's what's your favorite call? Um, you know, I do mostly installs now, but, or more so than that, or special projects. Um, but I actually don't mind, I don't get to do them very much anymore, but I like service calls. It's a problem solving for me. It mm -hmm. always has been. Yep. Um, you know, that I, I would say that's probably that or learning any new skill, which is pretty much every weekly for me at this point in time. <laughs> Cause I, there's quite a bit of things I see nowadays where I'm like, just shake my head and go, oh, all right, I'll figure it, figure it out. So the the training that you guys do at Girolos, do you do you have an an in, in house training program for your for your team? Do you hands on train them just with the knowledge that you have, or somebody else on your team? How does how does training work for you guys? It's a bit a bit of everything you just mentioned. So like uh, as the Generact and stuff like that, and a lot of our new stuff, it, it'll actually be some classes that either one of us will take or a couple of us will take to get certified, mm -hmm. or if it's a webinar, we'll all sit through it, or if it's something that my dad does, he'll do it, and then he'll like kind of inform us. Normally, I'll be the first to get to you know trial by fire is basically how I get to learn, but uh, like Brandon, he actually came from the uh, Delta, from um, tra the Delta Trade School for HVAC, okay. and so he actually said he learned more just riding with our service tech, which is Tony. He's his truck is here most because uh, that that truck sees the most mileage. But uh, he said he learned more in the first couple weeks of just going around with him than he yep. did in most of his classes. Yep. But uh, hands on training is pretty much the best. Um, but there's, it's funny because I, when I teach them and I show Brandon something that I know, you know, like old school technique, it's uh, it's funny because I'll say like, yeah it might be a rarity to see and then the next three weeks we'll see it just nonstop. and i'm yep. like well now you understand you know how to work it but yep. uh, hands-on is usually the best um but uh like tony actually he went to um uh i think a trade school in modesto so for hvac i'm the only one who really didn't go to school i just grew yeah. up doing this so yeah the dad school of hard knocks yeah, yeah. trial by fire yeah. a lot yeah <laughs> yeah so your your career path, Knight, um, do you do you want to kind of work yourself into what your dad does? So I, I don't I I don't know how long 
you know, before he wants to retire or semi retire, is your goal to try and learn what he knows and what he does? Or is that something that you're like, no, that sounds absolutely awful. Well, it's hard because I see he's stuck in the office most of the time and I don't know if I could do that. And I know it drives him crazy, but, um, it is a nice, it is nice to say, um, you know, my family's been doing this since 54. So it is kind of cool to say we have a 70 plus year old business that's still around and still kicking. So, um, it'd be, yeah. So yeah, I guess eventually taking it over for him so he can semi retire, but knowing him and being Italian that, yeah, Italians don't. Re- Italians don't retire. They just do less time at work. Yeah, and getting your hair more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So, um, you know, how many how many employees do you guys have at Kirolos? We have uh, eight. So it'd be my. Um, we got three in the office, mm-hmm. and then two service techs. So uh, Tony, and Michael, and then yeah, and then uh, me, Brandon, and Ted. Which we are, we float. We do a lot of installs, but we float between either special things or a lot of stuff like this. Um, or sometimes when it's hot out and Tony's backed up, we get uh, we do service calls to help out. You know, because summertime, I feel bad because my aunt, it's phone down, phone up, yep. phone down, phone up. It's yep. just when it's a hundred degrees outside. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Stockton gets uh, Stockton it gets, gets toasty. It gets so, yeah. yeah, it gets warm. Yep. Um, is is that a magic number for you guys, eight? Or do you feel like, you know, you potentially could have a, a bigger, bigger crew? We could. Uh, it would probably be helpful. But it's the way we do things, it's just we're so picky on who we can hire and to trust and stuff like that that mm-hmm. um, we're very selective on that as well as my dad just, it's, it's kind of, um, so he doesn't have, you know, another person that he's teaching while he's trying to do a bunch of other stuff. So yep. he's, he's trying to get it ironed out to a point where, you know, yes, we can acquire some more people and teach them and have it much more, much easier. Yeah. Uh, Cause right now it's very, um, it's a very, you know, uh, family business kind of feel to it. So it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to bring someone in when like um, a lot of our learning is hands yeah. on. Yeah. So at the table. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, that's um, that's the that's the the magic sauce of of trades business. Any any business really, it's the finding and cultivating of team members. <clears throat> you know, we we really operate because we're we got that Italian family vibe. <clears throat> we try and operate as a as a family unit, and we do, which makes us very picky on who we bring in to the fold. Yeah. Um, and it's also hard, you know, it's our family name on the shirt, mm-hmm. you know, that's what people associate with. So he's, it definitely does play into, you know, but it's just not a lot. And the, the other thing is not a lot of people want to do trades anymore. I know I went to college and, uh, honestly, I'm glad I, I went trades route because my days I enjoy, I guess I just have always enjoyed working with my hands, but yeah. I, I remember in college just, a lot of people just were not, you know, yeah. they could never imagine doing, you know, actual some labor. Something. And, yeah, it's something that trade, but, I mean, we need them. Everywhere yeah. I go, we need them. Oh, I mean, yeah. Brandon <clears throat> over here, he's 25, and everybody thinks he's much younger than that, but all the older guys are like, it's good to see that someone young wants to be in the trades and stuff yep. like that. So. Yeah. They're out there. I mean, night they're... You know they're still in the in the trade schools. Oh um, no! So you know they're they're out there, and you know I I say this often. You know, like parents, the trades are the trades are important. You know, and and you know back in the day, so I'm, I'm uh, way older than you, but we weren't paid extremely well as tradesmen. You know, we were a dime a dozen. You know, you could didn't you couldn't do something. Oh, I'm gonna go be a mechanic. You know, because, you know, it's nuts and bolts, you know, it's, you know, dangerous if you don't do it right, but still was nuts and bolts. And in today's world, it's, is not, is not that, I mean, our, our, our automotive technicians are, uh, plumbers, HVAC, fabricators, uh, IT support, mechanical engineers in one body. 
So it's it really it really is hard to get people find people that have that kind of brain skill set, and then to see how many auto repair shops are out there. There, it's like there's there's not enough. There's definitely not enough. So um, tradesmen, tradespeople. Uh, if you if you notice that your child, your your youngster, or even you, you're you're a you're a doer. You like to build or tinker or fix. Don't be shy. Get, there's there's a job out there for you. I guarantee it. Whether it's HVAC, mechanic mechanics, plumbing, electrical. If you've ever if you're a homeowner and you've called somebody out, you know it's hit or miss. They might be too busy. You know, it might be. Th- six months before they can come out and see you that's because they just we just don't have enough people you know that's shop true. shop like Hirolos could probably staff up at least eight more people and be able to cover more ground in less time it comes down to people yeah that and and like work ethic and managing people you know yep. the headache it's yes. it's also the headache of more people so yeah um but I have yet- 30 <laughs> Yeah. yeah, 30, 30 people in our company and we're picky just like you. So oh, yeah, it's no. been, been a long, long time to get those 30. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny you say that all wrapped in one and about learning the trades. I've actually had to teach myself coding to work on something right? so, or to solve a problem. So, I mean, I can't just say that I've, you know, I know how to do plumbing, electrical, heating and air and sheet metal. I need to know how to, how to, I've had to, uh, a lot of my units now, like the newer Samsungs, the or even the Mitsubishi's where they're full cities. I have to ha- before I even pull a tool out, I hook my laptop up to them because that's yep. the easiest way for me to communicate and diagnose them. Yeah, pulling so. out pulling out trouble codes, information. Yeah, it's it's no joke. No, it's not. It's, yeah, it's not as simple as a you know when I started when I was a kid, <clears throat> where it was the old school of like. R22, is it beer can cold? All right, yep. it's good. Yep. No, nowadays it's like, I got to pull my laptop. I, I don't even show, I show up with a screwdriver in my laptop on some units because I could chase a problem all day long if I don't have the laptop. So, yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Like, if you think about our appliances today, so I, st- I still have old school appliances because, you know, I, I work in, I work in the trades. I've, I have some old school cars and, you know, as, as much as I like fancy, cool and new, man, stuff, stuff freaks out. Electronic stuff freaks out. So I have the same washing, washer and dryer. And I, you know, my, my brother-in-law is having problems with his, which is like three years old. The circuit board is bad. Well, and that, it's hard to say it, that isn't on just the circuit boards which it is but it's not just um because a lot of our uh samsungs we put in they have so many circuit boards in there Mm -hmm. we put on surge protection and line voltage monitors yes and you'd be surprised on how many times a day your voltage changed Mm -hmm. goes out of range out of whack yep um we had one customer i installed it when i installed it i installed it tight and that's because i was trying to protect the units for almost most of that day, the the surge protector kept it off. When I when I checked the fault codes, there was twenty five fault codes just from the next day, of the voltage either going way too high or way too low. He would never notice it in the house, but that thing was sensitive enough to be like, I'm not gonna let this thing. It wasn't gonna let the unit run, and so I had yeah. to loosen it up. But the power is not <clears throat> a stable anymore. So yeah, yeah. It, you know, a lot of the new stuff is very susceptible to spikes like surges that. like that yeah because they're 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 micro micro processors you know little little surges create heat heat is not good on electronics and yeah it's uh it's definitely it, things are cooler neater but you know you have to take those necessary precautions to oh yeah protect uh, them oh absolutely yeah um that's it's funny you say <clears throat> that because a lot of the new homes now they install bus bar surge protectors on them which we install ones that are a little better than the surge protector on um on houses if they ask us to but uh yeah almost all new construction now has surge protectors and i'm guarantee you it's because they know that there's power problems yeah yeah speaking of power problems 
how many electric cars can we get on the road and solve that power <sighs> problem? <laughs> yeah, that's that's for another day. Um, yeah, this that's my that's my field. I've been in the, you know, we we've, we've been working on hybrid technology since it first came out with the Honda Insight and the little Prius, but the the battery powered cars are they're neat and serve a purpose. The whole let's make everything that is just very odd that's yeah we, can't, we cannot support that no and i yeah. i on my personal level of you know understanding because we have a lot of rules that we have to deal with when it comes to the environment especially since uh they're trying to basically trying to push us all away from gas appliances yes um i know because they're making everybody go basically electric but uh the the problem with the cars is that no one ever thinks about is what happens to that battery after five to six to eight years yep. when it's done. Yep. I've done the I research. I, yeah, <laughs> I know. I know too. And I also know what it looks like when they have to mine it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, <coughs> it's a strange, it's a strange world when, <clears throat> when policymakers make the, make the call instead of people who should be making that call um so moving away from <laughs> politics uh so tools garage you you guys kind of became our client through osmosis you know we tried mm -hmm. to try to operate like bruce and jacks you know his uh his goal was to for us to come in here and be able to take care of his clients and you know that that was that's our goal anyway uh, we definitely run differently. What has your experience been with the change from Bruce and Jack to Tools Garage? Um, honestly, I'll be honest. It, you guys do offer a few more things than, than uh, uh, Bruce and Jack's mm -hmm. did, but really I don't feel much, really any difference to because it was always just like Paul in here at the front counter or Ron that I always talked to. Mm -hmm. And so it always felt like, you know, a small family business when I came in and, you know, I walk in, they, you know, most of you guys know me by now, or yeah. at least our trucks and stuff. Yeah. You know, you guys have always taken care of us. Um, really, it's, I mean, and it was nice to not have to, because when, when someone, you know, acquires another company that you've always used, there's always that little scare of yeah. like, oh, great. how's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I finally found someone, but it was nice because we never have had to worry about that. You know, you guys have always taken care of us just like they did and have always been straightforward with us. So it's, you know, I really, I haven't noticed that huge of a difference. Good, um, good, good. We hope that that, if you did notice, it was better, but that's, that's <laughs> our goal. No, that's our goal anyway. No, no it's, I, it's, I didn't pay him to say that today. So it was, you know, no, it's, <laughs> just it's, it's a lot, that's a lot of like, you know, when, when I spend my day worrying about my problems, you know, like that's, it wasn't that I was, wasn't looking for, you know, I just, I didn't notice a difference. So yeah. in my mind, you're, protect, that's, you're covered. Yeah, exactly. That's I'm, how, I'm able to, cause my trucks, they need to be out. Livelihood. And, and that, yeah, well, exactly. The, the trucks, every day a truck is not on the road. It's not making money. So, yes. um, you know, the yep. less time that's down, the, you yep. know, the Got, more business I can do. Yep. Got to pay your people. And so it's and make money. It's a, uh, I would say I haven't noticed, you know, in my mind, it wasn't like I noticed, like an, a there negative. There was no degradation. Yeah. Yes, 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 perfect. I, and I'm sorry. Good. Yeah, I'm, I didn't mean to. I'm good with that. No, I'm totally good with that. That's. Uh, I mean, our goal is to is is for that. We we do work on quite a few fleets. Um, not we're not all fleet based because we're we're also a little particular with who we take because <clears throat> we have a system uh, of to try and be very. Uh, productive and efficient and we will get fleets that come in and they're like okay cool yeah i got want to get this car done and you know they want it done you know at, at their rate that they really can only they only want to cover which is which is fine um but we that's not how we operate like it, i would rather not do a whole bunch of stuff at a reduced cost f because it jams up my it jams up the way that we do it. Our goal with fleets is, look, it's where you don't pay more, but I do kind of give you a little bit of a cut in line kind of scenario yeah, because well, 
you know, that's that at the end of the day, we want, we want your car back on the road. And we also are looking for people for, for companies and fleets that are like, yes, I need it fixed. That way when we're in there and we're like, okay, cool, we found it. And there's some other couple things that we see that are going to make this car come back. When our, when our fleets are like, yes, get that done. It just keeps, it keeps that vehicle on the rack so we can almost get it done quicker and then get it back to you. It's the fleets that are like, well, can we change half of that tire and maybe <laughs> save the, no, we, that, that's, that, that is, we, if we try to do that, we're going to, it's never, it doesn't turn out right. So, oh no, I, yeah. I know I hear the same things all yeah. the time. So yeah, I yeah. understand. It's awesome. It's awesome having good, good companies that we like working for because it, it feels like we're, I don't want to say partners, but we're kind of like we we have this good partnership. You know, we, most of the fleet companies that bring their cars to our shops are the same companies that we're calling out and doing doing work. And as we grow, you know, I I do envision more shops in our future, mm-hmm. and the the relationships that we've built those are the going to be the ones that come out and kind of hey we just took we just took this building over we we need this 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 and that when can we schedule that up boom let's no, let it and, roll and it's you know i was always raised old school like that you know it's you know i you try to support your friends businesses yep. not go out of the way you know cuz either it's a, a little cheaper yeah. or b it's we'll save 20 more, bucks over there yeah exactly i've always been on this boat if my friend's trying to do something i'm going to even if it's more expensive to me yep. i'm trying to help my friend out yep. who is trying to start a business or trying yep. to do something so yep try to keep it at least i've always and my friends all know this that i do my best to at least buy things in a way you know that support certain things and my friends know that i also won't spend my money in certain places and yep. it's because Growing up in a small business, I have always had the luxury of picking where I do business. So yes. I, that carries over to my personal life as well. Yep. So. Yep. Support the companies that you that that's that support what you believe in. You know, I'm a I I'm an advocate of uh this company called First Form. You know, we I saw you you saw your can. I hear a lot of people talking about First Form. They're they have a great customer service system. The product is is great. It's I don't I don't have a bunch of different you know things that I've tried over my years, so I can't tell you. Oh, this is the best. I actually don't care because the service I get with it is worth it. I don't even I don't even know how much how it compares price wise. I seriously don't care. They what support you, what we you know yeah. the American way. They're behind all that, and and I'm like I I love that. I that, love that. You know, and I've heard them on a lot, a lot of like some pod. I watch like one podcast, if, if I'm really honest. But a lot of my YouTube channels that I watch and the things that they talk about, um, a few of them have mentioned First Form. Yeah, um, I haven't really looked into them myself, but uh, Andy I've heard Frizzella. the name a lot. Andy Frizzella. He he had a his his original podcast was called the MF CEO Project. Hmm. So he's he's got a multi multi-million dollar companies and uh he's like a tradesman man at heart he's yeah. a little says <laughs> says what he says it comes out so obviously mf ceo project so he his new podcast is called real af and he talks about the world today and you know he's very very passionate about it he's actually created this uh program called 75 hard um, I ran it and completed it 30 pounds. I dropped. Oh, nice. Um, but it was, uh, you know, the dude is rigid, you know, he's, yeah. he's got his program and, and, uh, I like it. I like, I follow him and, you know, we're, I support, I support what he does. He probably doesn't need my money, but I still support it anyway. Well, no, that's good. And that's like you said, you pick where you spend your money. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Um, I've had a lot of my friends do the seventy five hard. It's yeah, it's not it's it's rough. It it was not easy, right? It, no, it's not. It's <laughs> right? not, you it know. Was, it was a commitment. It was a commitment. And it and it continues. Well, it's funny because it doesn't seem like it's hard tasks. It just it's they seem like simple things, but when you Five actually things. in in least in this day and age, 
to sit down and read 10 pages a day. Yes. Drink a gallon of water. I know because I, I do drink a gallon of water yeah. a day. That but, was hard for me. That was, no, know. it's rough. It's rough when you first start. Yeah. But, uh, I never did the 75 hard, <clears throat> but um, I know about drinking a gallon of water a day, especially sweating it all day long. Yep. <clears throat> it's uh, Yeah, it's rough at first. Yeah, and the workouts. So the two workouts a day, one outside, was I picked probably the worst time to do it. I, I started in January, so it was winter. So my... My yeah. walks out in Valley Springs were three miles, and it was raining. So it was. <laughs> well, you still I, got it done. Though. I, I got, you it still done. got it done. Got it done. You couldn't fail on it. No cheat meals. No alcohol. Um, and you got to take a picture of yourself every day, which, you know, I kind of yeah. Sucked. No, I no, I do. Yeah, I like, I've been working out for a long time. So when you when you take those progress pictures for the first ones when you start again, oh yeah. It's, it's rough. Yeah, yeah. It's a little rough, it but is. when you watch, when you see the results, yeah, it's really yeah. worth it. I have my, I have my day one and my day seventy five picture kind of melded together, and I'm like, wow, man. I, I mean, little changes, little yeah, changes. little changes. But man, it is like I looked at my, looked at myself, and I'm like, damn, I don't remember looking like that. I guess I thought it was just our, you know, bigger. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, it's uh, it's all about supporting supporting what you believe in and spending your money where you want to. I mean, we earned it. We should, yeah, should spend it where you want to. Um, so, so what are some things that you do, uh, aside from working and being with the family? What are, what's your fun things? What do you do? (sighs) That is a long list. Um, most of the time, uh, because I don't get much free time, but it's usually gym. I spend a lot of time in the gym, um, working out. Not just the gym, but I like to do Olympic lifting, so I like to lift heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, Hence the size. <laughs> actually, I work out in the morning before work. Uh, I lift before work, but uh, um, either gaming, anything outdoors. I mean, I have so many hobbies and so many things. I have so many things I'm always teaching myself to do. Yeah. Um, if I have a problem, the first thing I'm going to do is probably teach myself a new way to do it than just to go either A – by the way that could do this or find someone and pay them to do it because I'm, I like to learn so much. So I'm the first thing I'm going to do is try to teach myself a way more complicated way. That's going to take way longer and probably be more expensive, but that's a lot of what I do. Yep. I, I was very, very similar to that. I, I'm because I'm a scrapper kind of, I I just came from, you know, normal house, you know, we were renters and, you know, I, I didn't really, I don't have like inheritance in my future. There was nothing. So I'm, I'm a scrapper. So I like to learn how to do it so I could do it. Um, as I, as I grew the company and became more and more, I don't want to say reliant. It's not really the word, but like it, I did, I, I'm not doing the work anymore. So I needed to be more reliant on my, my team. Uh, it really, it really started shifting my, my mindset. Like I could, I could go learn that. Um, but I, you know, I, during my walks, I I listened to this book. It was called who, not how it's better. It's better to, if you're, if you're like, I got to figure out how, how to do this, that, that sentence has to change. Like I got to figure who, I can have do that because they are, there's somebody out there that wants to do that right for you. They just need somebody to point them and help them do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, That is my, that's my new job. So, but there are some things that are still, you want to do. Well, it, and I wouldn't say it's because I particularly need to do it. It's more of like, want. it's a, it's a want, it's my entire crave just to learn new things and always be learning. Um, So, the only way, the easiest way for me to learn that thing, because at the end of the day, when my brain's fried, the last thing I want to do is sit down and just start like, you know, reading something yeah. or like reading like a, an online class or a lot of the YouTube videos. But if I give myself a project that doesn't really need to be done, it usually will get me to the point where like, okay, I'll become consumed with it for a while. Yeah. All the YouTube, all the things I can find to the point where, you know, for 
example, I taught myself how to code in like a very simple coding. And I'm not going to say anything in about a week and a half um, to get basically a circuit board to work as a sw- micro switch for me. And it was a lot. It consumed me for a while, but I like doing things like that. So yeah. that's, you know, that or it's that or any technique I can learn in the kitchen to yeah. make something myself because yeah. I like to cook and bake. So anything I can do by my, you know, Still hands on, but I can kind of check out yep. from doing it. It's kind of nice for me to relax and do. Yep. Still doing something, but still, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm very very similar. Like during seventy five hard, I was like, you know, you're you're putting in your notes and all these things that you're doing. Like, what what was hard today? I'm like, well, I'm sore. As I am <laughs> sore. So I'm I'm to keep my mind off it. I actually learned how to solve a Rubik's cube. Finally, in my fifties. <laughs> Not that it matters at all, but it was like, oh man, all these years I could have. No, but it was just something that you wanted. You probably have always wanted to do. Yeah, and you're like, you know what? I might as well just do it. Yeah, but I was a tradesman, so here's how I solved it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's how I solved it. I'm like, yeah, I got this down. Um, so you mentioned cooking. I I don't know an Italian that does not like to be in the kitchen. So what uh, what kind of stuff do you like cooking? Um, a lot of, uh, if you, if I had to define one way I, I like to cook is, um, either around holidays, which is just nice. however I want. Yeah. Um, usually something new and extravagant, but most of my cooking is usually geared towards, uh, taking a recipe I really like and either trying to make it as healthy as possible or mm-hmm. cutting out as much of the bad, usually sugar. I usually yeah. try to cut out as much sugar as I can out of it, find uh, alternatives or different ways to make things. Um, really my Instagram, I use my Instagram. I, I have social media. I'm never on it, but really for, uh, recipes, my Instagram is just full of like thousands of saved recipes. I'll yeah. never get to. And every right. once in a while I'll pick one, but, uh, I like to cook. So it's usually just challenging myself. It's just constantly challenging myself. Cause if I don't have that kind of I guess mental challenge mm-hmm. that I get bored. I get Do you bored. lean towards the Italian food type of Everything. stuff? You're... Usually, it, honestly, I love all food, so it's just whatever I'm in the mood for. Yeah. And uh, sometimes it's like if it's a place I really like to go to or like um, it's, it's a place in Sac and I know what the meal is, I'll try and make it myself just because not to do them wrong. It's just because sometimes I just don't want to drive all yeah. the way to Sac to get yep. like uh, – there's a lot of places that I like, but like sometimes I just don't feel like driving yeah. and I don't want to leave the house. So I was just like, you know what? I can make it. I can. Yeah. And it's never as good, but it's, I'm like, it scratches the itch. Yeah. We, we, my wife is, is a very good cook and you know, we've replicated like some of the, the blue Bayou Disneyland recipes and you know, cause we've had it and we're kind of like, oh, it's, it sounds like, feels like it has some of this in there. And, um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's, I'm a foodie. That's that's probably why I was 215, right? So that's why I work out so much. So <laughs> right. I can eat. I, to be strong and so I can eat whatever I want. Right. I like to bake. That was my, that's my biggest downfall. I'm a, I like, I'm a I baker. like sweets. I like sweets. Yeah. That's, that's my downfall. Like I can't, that's, that's rough. I, I'm trying to learn how to now incorporate that in. So oh, I got, yeah. In moderation. Yeah. Um, I've been, it's hard like, though. Moderation with sweets. Yeah, yes, it is. Well, because sugar's so sugar's so addicting. That's (laughs) the problem. Um, But uh, I like to make tiramisu, or like usually when I I bake, we do that. I will text a lot of my friends and be like, "Hey, I'm baking. Yeah, do you want some? Sure." And I will drop it off at their house that day. Yes. So I'll have enough to keep for you know family. Yeah. Everything else, I'm like, I want it out of the house. Get it out. Yeah. I had the taste. I made it. It tastes good. I know what I need to change next time. I want it out. Yeah. If not, I'm gonna eat it. I was doing cakes for a while. I was, you know, watching, what was it, Cake Boss on TV. And I'm like, okay, dude, I got this. He's doing all my cakes. Everybody's like, oh, these are great. And I'm like, get them out. Yep. Because I pretty much, I think I ate all the little crusties off the thing. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah but, that's good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, by the time you taste everything. Yeah, you, man, you I had like half cakes. a cake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So so you mentioned sugar, a lot of sugar. Um, Northern and Italian are total, totally different, right? Totally different flavor profiles. Oh, absolutely. Um, my my wife, we, so we we can tomato sauce every year. So we grow our tomatoes and we, you know, do it up. We make sauce mm-hmm. for the whole year. 
another friend of mine, his he's Sicilian, so Southern, and their sauce is totally different. It's it's hotter. It's earthy. And it's yeah. a lot earthier. Yeah. It's a lot bland. It no, I wouldn't say bland. It's a lot less like you don't use wine in it. You know, you're not using any of the rich flavors. It's it's meat, it's tomato sauce, maybe some seasoning. Yeah. And that's that's it. Like yep. pesto. Uh, cause I'm sure I got a baby jar in the, in the freezer of my grandmother's homegrown pesto and it's doesn't have all the nuts and Parmesan cheese. A lot of people have, it's olive oil, garlic, basil, maybe a little Parmesan cheese. So it's, when you eat it, it's, it's peppery. Yeah. It's fiery. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. So we, when we make our, our sauce, you know, we, we have like tomatoes, celery, onion, salt it's it's got it's got a good flavor but that's our base for that's our base for everything and we've had some people that they put sugar and oh, yeah. you know and we're just like look it's to kill the acid that's the yeah, acid, the yeah. acid there's a, a different way to kill the acid so sugar is I, you can now i can pick out sauces yeah, that have sugar yeah. in it. Oh, i can't i can't i don't i don't like it <laughs> it's not it's it's rough because I have a lot of friends ask me, well, where do you go eat Italian? I, go, I, I walk a block away to my grandmother's house. Right. And she'll make me pasta if I want pasta. I go, I don't go out for it. Italian because I'm just going to be disappointed. You're going to pick it apart. It, yeah, I'm yeah. just going to be disappointed yeah. is what's going to happen. There was a place in um, Capitola, mm-hmm. a little little off the, off the beach, a little Italian place. I can't even remember the name of it, but my wife and I went down there for our anniversary and we were just walking around in the daytime because in the daytime it was like, there's not really, there's nothing really going on out there. And we walked by this place and it was still a little early and we didn't, nobody's in there. And we were like, well, you know, it's an Italian place, you know, should we try it? And we were going to leave and the a guy comes out, oh, hey, hey, come on inside, come on inside, we're open. So we went in there, God, bomb. It was was he like, Sicilian? Uh, no. The only reason I asked that no. was because we were, we went to Sicily. I finally got to go to uh, Sicily in Italy. We were down from our hotel. There was a guy who had a pizza place. We walked in and had some pizza. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I my brother has a place in America. And we were like, where? He was like, I don't remember if he said it was Santa Cruz or Capitola, but it was a pizza place. And he goes, yeah, my brother has an identical place. There, it over there and yeah I was there's like, a p there's a pizza place in capitola but this was just a, it was an italian restaurant uh-huh. and it was we were like i mean my wife's super picky with italian food it was it was fantastic it was so good that we set up another time where we actually brought her parents out oh, had, yeah. yeah the tiramisu there was oh my god yeah, yeah it was it was so good it's and it doesn't happen a lot so when we find find one it's like we're Oh. That's worth that's worth oh, the trip. No, yeah. It's worth the trip. Um so so your dad your dad's been doing this so you said since nineteen fifty four. My grandfather. Your grandfather started it nineteen fifty four. Yeah. So you're third gen. Yep. Nice. Yep. yep. Nice. That's uh doing that's this. difficult to do in business. I've been doing this a lot. <laughs> I always tell I look at a lot of people go, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool though. You know, I mean I can I, I try and think if like if my family was in this business how how I would feel about it you know maybe like you oh no I I know my dad likes it you know I work with him every day you know? yeah even though yes sir we're both stubborn Italians and yes we butt heads <laughs> here and there but um it is nice working with family it is yeah. cool because like it is when people talk about it, I'm like yeah I've been doing this a long time and it's not just to say that but you know my family's. Not many people can say their family still has a business that started in the fifties, yeah, you know, anymore. Yeah. So, Gen- uh, generational businesses are tough because there there are some stats that are like you know second generation. It's it's I think it's greater than fifty percent failure because the the second generation doesn't have to do what the first generation did to get there, mm-hmm. and. And then even further and further as it goes along, but I I think that comes from work work ethic and uh, respect, you know, because yeah. you know second generation is like, well, dude, why can't we just do this? 
Well, you might be able to. A lot of them think they know better. Yes. That's, my and, dad says it all the time. Yes. But and, you there are some things that you might. No, right? it, it and it is it's it's understanding the old respect? way. Yes, it, <clears throat> looking at it with respect and also marrying the new way, you know, yes. still understanding where you came from, your values and yep. stuff like that, but also learning that how to adapt with the times. And yeah. which I have to say my dad has done a very good job. It's the reason why we don't just do heating and air conditioning. Yeah. You know, we do a little of everything. Um because to be perfectly honest, a lot of them cross over. They just they just yeah. cross over, and yep. so it was. It made um, like the solar. It was basically our distributor for years. Just kept telling us, "Hey, maybe you should try." It. And they came, did a quick demo. It's it, the not way, much too. This. The way we do the micro inverters, it really wasn't that much more work than things I was already doing. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it's you, you got to adapt. You know, I as we've had some conversations with lots of people i've 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 embraced the position that i have in the my, my company which is visionary it is how my brain works anyway so i like to be on the forefront i like to see what's out there and you know i have tons of ideas we were just talking about that you know his dad has a lot of ideas and so do i and a couple of them are good, right? And and uh, you know, having having a good team of people that you trust and have confidence in to go like, yeah, that's that's awesome for someone else. These these let's let's get some let's figure this out. So um it's it's being able to bring in that new that new direction. That new direction. It's it is important to stay on top. Um so third gen, that's that is that's yeah. a feat you should be definitely definitely proud of that oh i am yeah. i am i i do i i don't throw it out there but it is when people ask i'm like yeah, yeah i've been my family's been doing this for quite some time so um like i said it's it's hard to hard pressed to find a business that's just been still going this long so yeah because it's hard to you know as a kid growing up in a in a in an environment sometimes you just you know they don't want to li- you don't want to listen to your parents anyway right and which kind of drives you towards looking at something else going to college to get in the lab um when you get kind of like you're forced into those businesses it's like you you never truly in, i don't know you don't you don't operate the same it's when you come back into it you're like you know well, it was what I would notice for me was I like I've always enjoyed the problem was is a lot of the lab work I wanted to do, I'd probably never see the results. And so I like working with my hands. So being able to see a job complete yeah. was kind of nice. Yep. Um, but really what it came down to was politics. Politics of what the lab situation is and I don't we don't have to I don't have to deal with politics of a company. Yeah. I, I, you know. Uh it's, it's what the one of the biggest perks of the family business there's I don't have politics to deal with. And, yeah. and I honestly is brutally honest as I am as a person, I couldn't take somebody trying to talk down to me just because I yeah. Yeah. come from where I grew up and how I grew up and being taught respect and stuff to have someone disrespect me yeah. would not go well um, for them. Yes. That's all I got to say. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's a reason I'm an entrepreneur too. Um, I get it. I get it. I, I, it's, it's the reason why our company is doing well too, because I don't, I don't care what role anyone has. I am not kidding you. I don't care. Like I meet sometimes like athletes or whatever. And I'm just like, Hey, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And as soon as they get that, well, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I, I, you just, I, I look at people like this. It's a lot of people, you know, yeah, you've worked hard to get your status. Cool. Yeah. Does it make you any better than nope. anyone else? No. Nope. You know, and, and DNA so, is human just like mine. I look at a lot of people, I go, you're just, you're more people. You're just, you're another human just like I yeah. am. There's 8 billion of us on yep. this planet. Yep. You just think your head's bigger. That's yeah. all. I'm like, That's... I like humble people, humble, like real people. So yeah. a lot of, uh, I had one lady I worked with in the lab was nice. Everyone else was a little rough to be around. So I was just like, ah, I started my, one of my friends put it to me, goes, is it really worth it? Are you really going to enjoy that for, you know, cause he knows yeah. me and he's, and I was like, no, he goes, so how's, you know, how's the fact that you work with your hands, you say what you want. You don't have to, you don't have to 
be PC with anyone. Yeah. You know, I'm like, it's great. It's really great, actually. It is. <laughs> he goes, yeah, because I know you. You're just a real person. You yeah. say what you, you know, you're not, yeah. you don't go out of your way to disrespect people, but you also say whatever's on your mind because, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. PC. Polite crap. Yeah. It's never true. Yeah, just it's easier to just spit it out. You know, I mean, honestly, it's something that you learn sometimes. If you're in a if you're in a tight knit household where, you know, you're you have there is that hierarchy, you learn you learn early enough, like just spit the truth out. Cause they're asking you. Yeah. They probably already know. Don't I don't tell fabricate. a lot of people, don't ask me unless you want the actual answer. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, man. We've been uh, we've been chatting it up for uh, almost an hour. I know uh, it was sprung upon you because you know you usually you would have brought your Armani suit out here, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did whatever. But but uh, I know you guys got to get back to work, and uh, I appreciate you guys getting out here and you know tackling this for me. And I know it's not a awesome project, but you know I I totally it needs to happen. It. Yeah, it needs to happen. It needs to happen. It's part of my vision. So. Uh, <laughs> Are you hiring? You looking for people that want to get in this trade? Uh, yeah, we're always looking. It's just, uh, um, like I said, we're just we we would like to grow, but it's it's slow. It's not it's not like a you know, but um, just be willing to work and uh, we try not to take people with yeah you know, like bad habits because there's some there's a lot of companies out there that that all over that come people come with bad habits because yes. you know way we do things and the way other people do things yeah. but uh i mean i'm not we're not opposed with you know we're looking i guess the right ones the right you yeah know. i'll tell you that what we've what we've really been focused on over the last i guess the last year or two is you know we hire good people anyway that's our that's always been our goal your your resume got you in the door your personality got you on the floor but we are really gearing a lot of like our like our interviews. It's more like conversational, but we're really trying to pull out character traits because we can teach skill and do. We Absolutely. offer that stuff all the time, but we cannot teach character. Nope. And it character's hard to find. Right morals. It's yeah. We're really looking for people that align with like the kind of morals yep. and stuff that we have. You yep. Know, as I guess as you know, my dad has and my, my grandfather always had. So, yep. you know, we're trying to make sure that we keep that our image that is, you yep. know, doing the right thing. You do you, when you interview with people, I don't know how often you do, but when you interview with people, is that do you talk a lot about that more so than what you do? You know, honestly, I can't remember the last time we've had like yeah. a pure interview. Okay. Brandon came uh a while back and he used to train with my dad in Muay Thai. So he was looking to get in. He asked. He was taking the classes, and he just he came and started riding around with us. And mm-hmm. now he, he, he's, I mean, he's as good as any any tech out there. So it's yeah. you know, I, I'd say that was the last like real interview we really had. To to be perfectly honest, <laughs> so you're, not is, you're not active. You're not actively out there trying to grow it. No, no, no. Well, we, it's not that we aren't. It's just. We're, we got so many irons in the fire that that's not, yeah, it's not entirely the forefront. Mm -hmm. Um, it is, we're looking, but it's not like we're actively looking. That is something that we've, like I said, we've, we've, we've changed up some of the things that we're doing. We, we actively look, you know, and I don't even have enough room necessarily for anybody new, but we're actively looking because there are people out there that, that you, they got to be on your team. You got to figure out how to get them on your team. And the more you, the more we interview, the better we get at it uh, about pulling out character. Um, and what we have found is the more you talk about the culture, the, I don't know, the, the, the fundamentals, the, the mission of what you do more than the actual job, the tasks mm-hmm. you can, you're kind of setting that person up to 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 understand like that is I, I want that because some are out there like that sounds awful 
Like, yeah. That sounds awful. I just, I want to just, I don't want any of that shit. I just want to come in here and, you know, make money and, you know, whatever, which, which is a lot of my trade. Right. To be perfectly it, honest. It, mine summer, too. Mine summertime. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Mine too. So when we, we've determined that those kinds of questions, how people respond to that, that level of, you know, like, oh, I'm not talking about how, you know, can you change a, a timing chain? Can you, you know, do this on a valve cover? Or a, you know, we're talking about insides, yeah. you know, a lot of, a lot of that stuff. And we're watching how they're, how they're reacting to it, what their, what their responses are. And that's kind of giving us a better understanding of their character. And so far, oh, we'll say of the last four the last four hires, they are, they, I mean, the training is less. I mean, we, we train them for a little bit on some stuff that we're doing and they're like on it. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a different. Well, yeah, like game. you said, you can't teach that. That's yeah. something that's acquired yeah. over years. Yep. So, so if, uh, if, if trying to get somebody on, on board, maybe that's something that you can start figuring out you're pretty straightforward direct and you know you you start telling when you're when you're meeting with somebody some of the younger kids like hey this is what we're all about this is what we do here's mm -hmm. who we are not a lot about the you know duck work and you know no disassembly and I'm, I'm we're transparent with people when we yeah. talk to them give yeah. them too much information i'm i feel bad sometimes when the customers ask me a question because i give them a technical answer unfortunately it's just because i'm trying to give them the all the information i can right they're yeah. like yeah no it's it's when my dad goes to do a, a bid and i've gone with him a couple times i feel bad for them customers because he just he's trying to give them as much information as possible <clears throat> and they just their their faces just go blank because he's yeah. just pouring so much and you know and i'm like you know I, I've learned to dial it back a little yeah. bit, but yeah, yeah. No, read just... read the room. As soon as you glass them over, stop, <laughs> back up a little bit, and yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's just being upfront, doing the right thing. You know, transparent with customers. I mean, just good morals yeah. that we try to imbibe by. Yep, so. yep. Well, we know you do. That's why we. You're thank you're you, our thank call. You. You're thank our call. You. So speaking of our call, how do how do people how do people get a hold of you? Uh. We have uh, our website, which is Corollos.com. <clears throat> Sorry, um, our number, it's still been the same since it was my grandfather's. It's two, uh, the 209-464-9658. Mm -hmm. I have that imbued in my memory from a child. But uh, those are typically the best ways to reach us. Uh, email um, on the website, you know. Anyway, Instagram, really. you're going to find out how to make spaghetti and, <laughs> and lasagna. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, he pronounced it, what did you say, Cor Corollos, like it's a Toyota? Corollos. Yeah, yeah, well, I always pronounce it for everybody. It's Corollo. It's just how I pronounce it for yeah. everybody else. Cause but it's really Corollos. Corollos. So uh, we will, we'll put it on the screen so you can spell it, look it up. If you guys need heating, air conditioning, and even solar installed, Home these generators, home, home generators, generators yeah. Generac. These guys are, these guys are on point. <coughs> um, like I said, they they they're tackling a job that not a lot of people want to touch. And grabbed him like that <laughs> to jump on Shop Talk Live and did a great job. Right, awesome. Thank you. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for coming out. Thank you very much. Great job. I'm Dave the Car Guy. Signing out. Thanks for listening to Shop Talk Live. For more episodes, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Tools Garage. Remember, drive safe and stay tuned for more. Until next time, I'm Dave the Car Guy, signing out.